In this training video, we'll look at building a part using Onshape's mobile interface. Onshape can run on smartphones and tablets. Now please don't run it within the mobile browser. You need the Onshape application. The Onshape app enables a wide variety of touch gestures, and its interface has been optimized for mobile devices. You can download the app for iPhones and iPads at the Apple App Store, and as of this recording, the Android app is not released yet, but it's coming soon. Now once you're logged in to Onshape, you'll see a documents page. Two common actions from this page are to either start a new document by tapping on the plus sign at the bottom right or open an existing document by simply selecting it. Now you can also click My Documents and filter to list further or click the search icon to find a specific document. I should point out in this video, I'm showing my touches in orange to add clarity. You're not going to see these touches on your screen. So let's open a document and dive right in. This is the part we're going to build, but I'd like to review some basics about the interface. You can rotate the model with a touch and drag movement. You can pan, zoom, or rotate around your viewpoint using a two finger touch and drag movement. You can select objects in two ways, simply tap or tap and hold to expose a precision selection crosshair. You can double tap in the white area to deselect all. And finally, you get an in context menu by tapping two fingers together. Let me show you this. With nothing selected, I can tap two fingers. And I see a little menu that includes zoom the fit. With a face selected, I can use that two finger tap and I see a lot more options. Now there's a lot more to the interface, but we'll learn as we go. So let's create a new part in a new part studio. Click the little plus symbol at the bottom left to create a new tab and choose create part studio. Just like the browser, you're presented with three datum planes and an origin. Now to gain more graphic area, I can resize the feature list and I can do this both in length and width. Just touch and drag this little handle. If I tap the little handle, I'll minimize the feature list. So I'll start by tapping the top plane and then selecting the sketch icon. If you have a problem identifying the icons, just touch and hold and you'll see the icon's name appear. Now use that two finger tap to bring up an in context menu and view normal to the sketch plane. Now I'm ready to draw some sketch entities. I'm going to start by drawing a center point rectangle and notice that if I touch and hold, I can precisely place the center of the rectangle, then drag it out to size. I can exit the command by either tapping the rectangle icon again or by quickly double tapping in white space. I'll now draw two concentric circles and again I'll use the touch and hold method to allow me to precisely place the centers on the midpoint of the line. To add dimensions, I'll choose the dimension icon. Notice as I choose different commands, it'll automatically exit you from the previous command. Now for the dimension, I can be a bit bold with my picks. I simply tap the two vertical lines of the rectangle and drag the dimension in place. After I place it, I can key in the exact value on the keypad that appears. Now if you need to manipulate the view while you're still in a command, you can. Use the gestures we talked about earlier. Since Onshape rescales the sketch based off the first dimension, I can use a pinch gesture with two fingers to zoom in. I'll go ahead and add a few more dimensions and then we can take a closer look at the sketch dialog. The sketch dialog can be shown or hidden with a tap. You'll notice that you can interrogate the sketch constraints here in this list. Pick an entity and the constraints are shown. Tap a constraint and it highlights the involved entities. A swipe left can be used to delete the constraint. Remember, a quick tap on the header at any time will hide the dialog box. You can accept the sketch and then invoke the extrude command or simply select certain sketch regions and extrude from the in context menu, and that's what I'll do here. Watch me call it up by using the two finger tap. Now a new dialog appears when I'm in the extrude command, and I can use a manipulator to drag the extrusion to size. I simply touch and drag the handle. Now I may want to key in an exact value. I'll use the keypad, or I can pull up the entire keyboard to type an expression. Now let's quickly look at the features in the part list area. Remember, I can resize the width and height of this by using this drag handle. I can even move the divider between the two lists. You can select sketches and features and choose to hide, show, rename, edit, or roll back simply by tapping the icons to the right. If you want to reorder features or drag the rollback bar itself, you have to click reorder at the top of the feature list. But right now, I simply want to show my first sketch. I also might want to hide the datum planes, and here's how I like to do it. I select all three by simply tapping them and then select hide from the in context menu. To create a second feature, I want to reuse a part of the first sketch. 
I'll choose the extrude command, rotate so I can select the two halves of the circular areas, and key in a distance of two inches. Then I just hit the check mark. It's that easy. I need a new sketch for the next feature. So I'm going to start by selecting a surface, insert a sketch, look normal, and then draw a two point rectangle. Notice that I can wake up the bottom corner of the part while I sketch. I'll draw a center line, and then a circle, and then I'll mirror the circle. Now for some dimensions. When the sketch is to size, I can accept it and then invoke the extrude command and use it to add material. Now let's look at applying fillets and chamfers. And here's where I recommend using precision selection. I'll add some larger fillets first. Notice as I select different edges, an icon at the top right shows me the number of items I have selected. If I tap this icon, I have the ability to deselect all and that can be very useful. After I applied the first fillets, I'll go ahead and run smaller fillets. Now finally I'll add a chamfer to finish the part. So we covered how to build the geometry, but you should notice you can do other things from the mobile interface. I can change the appearance of parts by tapping its name in the parts list. I can manage versions view document history, and restore to a past point of time using these icons at the top. And of course I can share. So now you understand that Onshape allows you not only to access your CAD data from mobile devices, but you can create new geometry as well. Look for a second video in which we'll explore creating assemblies using the mobile interface.